So Jeffrey, I'm going to play one of your more recent songs, and I want to do it specifically because I think I, I heard you play it live, and and uh, you you shifted tempo from where you recorded it originally, yes. and that happens. You know, sometimes it's almost like you figure out the intent of something later, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just feels like you go, wait a minute, I, maybe it's this way, and that's what it felt like. I want to try and do it, with, not we. Won't, the band will do a great job of not butchering it, I think. I'll try and stay out of everybody's way. But I really do. I want you to tell the story that I heard you tell about writing this song. And it was inspired by something Mac Davis said to you? Yeah, it's, it's classic. Were you were threatening writing a song with Mac Davis? Or? Yeah, well, it goes way back. You know, I used to watch that TV show when I was a kid. Sure. Man. Where he would yeah, impromptu, he'd make, he'd make right? Ask the audience to throw yeah, in the Yeah, you know, and life is so full circle, right? So... Years later, I played in his band, played bass in his band, uh -huh. and I messed up. First song, I messed up, and he stopped the band and he, and he introduced me. He said, "We got a we got a brand new bass player. I want everybody to meet Jeffrey Steele." <laughs> 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 so, thank you very much. That was my intro. So, thank you very much. Twenty-five years later, I right. get a call from my buddy Chuck Cannon. He goes, "Hey, Mac Davis wants to write a song with you. You want to get together with oh, out of my house? Come on, come on out to my house. We went out to his house. It was Mac Davis, you know, and right. and and." and after all those years, and and um, so we started we started talking, and, and uh, I said, you know, what do you want to write about, Mac? And he said, well, I always wanted to write a song about planes flying over. And I looked over at my buddy Chuck, and I just went, well, he's got to be high or something. <laughs> you know, they, so he starts talking about telling this story about when he plane he, flying over. Yeah, and, and I thought he was high. You know, I didn't know. I said, it's gonna go. Okay, it's gonna be a weird day. You know, so he's. <laughs> He's going on and on. Tess starts telling the story about going back to Lubbock, Texas, and getting honored and getting the key to the city and all that. Of course, he had the the hit. Was yeah, Lubbock, happiness, Texas, in my rearview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was yeah. the title? Of the happiness, Lubbock, Texas, in my rearview. Was it called Lubbock, Texas? It was called. I think that was the whole title. Hit like Happiness, like Lubbock, 80, Texas, in my rearview mirror. So he get. So he. Uh, He's going back to get the key to the city and the whole bit, you know, and, and he's, he tells a story. So he, he's flying in on a Learjet. He landed on a dirt runway. I don't know. He's a songwriter, mm -hmm. so he might have made it up. But, yeah. With some <laughs> yeah. Mar He landed on some <laughs> marginal airstrip. Yeah, a marginal airstrip, and he gets out. He said, a county field somewhere. He, he said the guy came to get him in the limo, and the limo was a hearse. <laughs> And, and he get, the That's guy not gets, a good sign. And the guy gets out of the car. Unless you're going then, to Filthy McNasty's. We'll throw a little more on the Sunset Strip. Uh, and there. Lancashire. There was I played a double. Lancashire. There was one in Lancashire. Yeah. You played Filthy played McNasty's. Ladies and gentlemen, many times. I've not met until this moment <laughs> an, actual, an actual performer at Filthy <laughs> McNasty's. I used to drive by this place. They had a hearse with a top hat That's on right. the top of the That's hearse. Right. And, it was, and it's now... It became the central for a number of years, and Chucky That's Weiss right, Chucky and the right. goddamn liars Weiss, oh were God. a house band there. And the only thing that song said was Chucky smoking, and they were vamping, and he'd go, "Goddamn liars!" <laughs> that was their opening song every night. Anyway, so uh, so it then became now world famous as the Viper Room, the Viper Room on yeah. Sunset Strip. Yeah. But it was at the back in the seventies when I arrived down here. Yep. It was Filthy McNasty's. Oh, yeah. A hearse was parked out front at all times with a top hat, huge top hat, <laughs> on the top of the car. And there was another one in the valley on Lancashire. And yeah. did you play the strip one, too? I played them both, but I played mostly in the valley. I played the one in the valley wow. all the time. Because they, they would let guys like me play there. I'm you know? in I awe didn't, I didn't have to work of so a guy well. like you yeah. that played at Filthy <laughs> McNasty's. So, so he gets out so of the So Mac David the, the hearse pulls up to pick and, and him then up. It, and then his wife gets out of the hearse. In Lubbock, Texas. Then his wife gets out. And then the kids get out of the back of the hearse. And so he goes up and says, Mac, sorry, it's all <laughs> Not Mac's kids. We, the, I, the, I've the broken kids, the story yeah. up. Now, I don't know anybody listening, <laughs> if you're just getting it. Mac Davis, who Jeffrey was a, a former band member of... <laughs> And then cut to 25 years later when Jeffrey's at the height of your songwriting you know, career, right? You're yeah, doing it. And Mac called up and said, hey, I want to write a song together. They get together to write a song. And Mac said, I want to write one about flying planes, planes flying, flying over. over. And Jeffrey yeah. thinks he may be higher than the planes that are flying Panama, over. On some Panama Red. Yeah, he's on some Panama Red. <laughs> and, or, you know, he's not having anybody bogart that joint. So... He starts telling a story about so flying about into Lubbock, his hometown, his yeah, former hometown. To be honored by the city. To be honored, for, give the key to the city. For his great work. And yeah. as he lands on a little marginal airfield in the Learjet, 
He gets picked up by the a hearse. limousine that pulls up to pick him up is a hearse. It's a hearse. The guy gets out, wife gets out, the kids get out. And he goes up to the Matt, owner of and, the, and the Matt, driver, the limo driver's wife and kids. And so I came with him. Why not? I'm sitting there with my buddy Chuck, and we're just laughing at the story. He's telling it. And he goes, and the guy shakes my hand. He says, Mac, we're so proud of all your great songs and your great work. He goes, guys like me, I ain't ever going to get out of this town. And I looked over at my buddy Chuck. I said, shut him up. And let's write this song. <laughs> like, there's the song. There's no more fun. But we you, couldn't get him to stop. It's like stop but you, him so we could but write But you this did thing. manage to put his plane. I did flying that's overhead. That's, like a song and that's well. That's exactly. Yeah. I, look, that's. I told him. See what one, I did there? You know what? <laughs> I learned that from you, man. That's that's the empathy, which is one of the keys to your gift. Oh, yeah. No, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, now. I'm 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 thank being you. really, thank you. <laughs> you know, serious about that. I, I really mean it. I love this song. Thanks. And it, I, I heard you tell a story the first time I heard you play it, and I thought, that's fantastic. And what you, where that story ends up, with this as its as yeah. its culmination, 